This time I'd like to make a video about ether physics that in the late 19th century was widely an accepted theory that there was an ether all around us. First we have a short introduction from a video made Simeon. Tesla vs Einstein transcending the speed of light from the Simeon. Einstein essentially was stating that by its nature the ether could not be detected. However, Einstein also mapped the anti considery by saying that if the ether could be detected that this theory of relativity would, it was an error. Einstein further stated that if the light could travel like a particle, it would not need a medium, ether, to travel through, even though most of the great scientists of the day such as Maxwell, Faraday, Kelvin, Fitzgerald and Lawrence all accepted the obvious conclusion that there had to be a medium of transfer in space. In example, the ether, all of this was a glossed error, was glossed over. Since in the michelson morley experiment, light traveled at the same speed in the direction the Earth was moving, and at right angles to that direction, Einstein concluded that the speed of light had to be constant, according to special relativity. He further suggested in 1905 that the ether of the 19th century physics was not necessary, although what he really meant to say was it could not be detected. At the time this was a radical view. It was soon widely accepted, even though it implied that there was nothing between the stars. This concept quickly became dogma as it helped solve a number of dilemmas. For instance, they no longer had to search for the ether because according to this view it didn't exist. The perspective of popular science writers. Belief in the non-existence of the ether remained alive, but in actuality, by 1916 Einstein had replaced the old ether in his theory of general relativity by curved space-time itself. Only this new ether is no longer a medium of three-dimensional Euclidean space, but in four-dimensional non-Euclidean curved space-time. It was this idea that was completely unacceptable to Tesla, and he criticized Einstein in the 1930s because of it. Concerning the curvature of space, Einstein versus the idea of a force field, Tesla, the two concepts might actually be different, viable ways of describing the same thing. Both Tesla and Einstein are trying to describe the fundamental structure of space and its relationship to the constancy of light speed and gravity. Basically it's this, Nikola Tesla back then was a proponent of the ether theory and he said that Einstein's theories of special relativity were wrong and could not practically uh, be real and most scientists back then uh, also ac accepted the fact that there was an ether. Now we will check out a short video on the so-called Omnion particle that makes actually this ether all around us uh, that uh, the Omnion is the smallest particle that makes up this ether. That is from BibliothecaPleiades.net. Occult ether physics, hidden space propulsion systems, and the conspiracy to conceal it, by William Lyne. The truth can flow from lies, but lies can flow from the truth. Arthur Schopenhauer. Characteristics of the basic ether particles. My basic ether particle is called the Omni, which has a positive nucleus, a protet called an Omnion, and a negative subten electron, an electret called an Omnitron. As you may have noticed, this scheme is a scaled-down version of the basic hydrogen atom, with its proton and electron. For most atoms, the Omni is normally neutral and in equilibrium, but it, it is much, much, much smaller in size, being ultra-fine. Ultra Due to its tiny size and neutrality, it can pass easily through solid bodies except the solid bodies that are actually passing by and through it, yet it behaves like a solid in respect to high frequency electromagnetic radiation of specific range, from the infrared through the visible light frequencies, which disturb its equilibrium, yet though we can feel it, it appears to be transparent and invisible to the naked eye. Like hydrogen gas, there is some elasticity due to the compressibility of the magnetic field, so it is an elastic solid, as Faraday said, due to the tiny omni size so-called empty space is actually packed almost solid with this very fine matter or omniparticles which oscillates at such high frequencies, well beyond that of the X-rays, yet the tiny size and normal neutrality allows it to penetrate solid mass, which is mostly space, which is also saturated with omni which must be moved through by a mass to make room for more omni. Since interstellar space is equivalent to a vacuum containing little gaseous matter, such as a Leonard tube in which charges easily move, the omni in interstellar space is highly conductive with charges moving freely from body to body along magnetic lines of force. 
Omnipack space is also omnidirectly inter interpenetrated by ultrafine radiation, which is, nor which is a normally in equilibrium called zero point radiation. The basic difference is now between official theory that is taught at schools and the universities and uh, hasn't really led us any further. We did not develop any technologies that actually uh, neutralize practically the gravity around us and creating antigravitics as the UFOs are working on it. Uh, in pro Germans, Hannibal's frills and undermetal spacecraft use antigravitics, but they base themselves on a different science. And I believe in ether physics, what Nikola Tesla was a proponent of about. You have to understand that ether physics states that it's an energy all around us. This is really tiny parked energy, really high, uh, really high density energy that is all packed around us and it inhibits the same space that is apparently empty. And electromagnetism, electricity, and even electromagnetic radiation uses this medium to procreate its waves. It's practically like a boat in water. Just uh, imagine it. If you uh, if you understand, if you want to understand gravity or the force of gravity, if you're driving uh, in water for boat and you are at a high speed, as an example, and you turn off the motor, you still see that the water is practically pushing you further. The water is actually wants to go through you and pushes you further. This is the omniparticles practically. If you're on, a, on an aircraft or on a boat and you change the direction, you feel this force, the centrifugal or centripetal force, pushing you uh, to go on to, to keep going the normal way that you were going. And this pushing are actually the omniparticles or the ether, the ether particles pushing you in that direction. So you actually feel the ether and the effects of ether. And ether is practically also attracted by. Uh, mass bodies in such a respect that it's uh, the ether radiates downward onto the bodies, uh, onto mass, onto the planets as an example, and in this manner it creates gravity. If you take a space station, a rotating space station as an example, if you take, if you rotate in space, uh, you create practically a movement in the ether because its ether interacts practically with matter. Yeah, you create a movement in the ether and you create a force that makes the ether flow through it uh, away from you, generating gravity. It is the same force that keeps us down here. It's practically, if you rotate a space station in orbit, it's the same force. It's the ether going through your body and interacting with your body or the mass. Ether is neutral, but has also electromagnetic properties. And uh, in those days, during Nikola Tesla in the late 1900s actually, this was a theory that was widely circulated in the academia until Einstein and with the Zionists globally uh, 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 propagating this theory, the special relativity, that there is no ether, that there is no medium to propagate the magnetic waves or electromagnetic radiation, that there is no medium to procreate these waves, that it's all about space-time curvature, that the mass has a curvature in space and hence the curvature presses against the, the mass and hence uh, gravity is created. I first read about this uh, in SS Brotherhood of the Bell from Joseph P. Farrell, Alternative uh, Ether Physics. I've read about it some time ago, but I've never really actually studied it and thought about it. The ether is practically unpermeated, it's an energy all around us. And if, if you can tap into this ether, you can create a, a well, actually, yeah, a well of energy. You can tap into this and suck practically into particles out. And in this respect, you can understand these zero point energy devices that are practically suppressed by our official governments and the shadow government. Even the UFO, uh, the UFOs or the Hanubus on the Rills and Andromeda spacecraft worked, and even the Venusian ships, or they have some probably some other technology, but they influence the ether. By influencing the ether, you can actually um, nullify gravity. As an example, it's stated in these alternative textbooks online that the, uh, these bell-type ships or spacecraft create a magnetic field around them. They have two tubes or two uh, circular tubes that go in different directions filled with mercury and it creates a practically a, a vorticular magnetic field that separates practically this ship or the entire ship that makes practically the ether go around it. It creates a, a, a piece of space that is independent of this space and the ether goes around it, hence uh, the gravity is nullified. 
So you get a ship that is weightless, actually. Or the gravity or the 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 omnions, the particles, the ether particles that go through it are practically driven around it and it's no longer practically being pushed down to Earth. And how they this magnetic felt inducer, how that works is that they create a magnetic field in front of it and they interact with these uh, ether particles or omnions, they practically create a suction from their perspectives, and this can be only be generated in certain angles. That's why the first versions, I believe, with the Hanubus Rills and Andromedas, could only fly at certain angles, these bell-shaped crafts. So again, to recap, in the late 19th century, ether physics was considered a normal theory. Uh, people knew about this theory, and everybody actually logically assumed that there has to be an ether to promote, to promote, to promulgate the waves, the electromagnetic waves, like radio waves, microwaves, electromagnetic uh, waves, uh, visible rays, uh, like uh, blue, um, light, visible light spectrums. All these electromagnetic waves had to have a medium to promote, to uh, practically uh, expand from their or point of origin. It's like a water where you see that it actually expands in water, the waves that expand in water. The ether is actually used to practically uh, connect the entire world today, digitally, wirelessly. It all uses the ether practically to transfer information. I view this as a possibility. I studied the material and I never actually uh, I agreed practically with special relativity in the past already. I said uh, I studied the alternative theories online, alternative knowledge online, and this is a good example again of how official physics at school and universities is lame because it's theoretical physics. I studied mathematics and I shortly visited a course in uh, mathematical physics. And it was all theory, 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 in, uh, in non-Euclidean spaces defined, uh, and really abstract mathematics, but it had nothing to do with reality. If we really understand uh, gravity, as a uh, matter Nikola Tesla did, and actually um, <laughs> designed a ship that circumvents gravity, like a UFO, then you can, uh, then it's no fun to study. You're indoctrinated at the universities with this official theory, special relativity is the utmost, and then of course quantum mechanics. But if we learn a false theory and believe a false theory, then how can we build technologies that could help us? That's why the shadow government keeps this as a secret, keeps it for itself. They keep this knowledge for themselves and develop these anti-gravitic spacecraft for themselves, TR3B. And even the Imperial Germans learned of this physics and alternative physics. In SS Brotherhood of the Bell is an example. They portray an entire revolutionary concept on how the Germans build technologies according to this real physics. I believe in ether, I believe I rather believe in an ether, which makes more sense than in the curvature of space-time. Then you have to understand, curved into what? There has to be another space above it or below it to be curved upon. This is electromagnetism, practically a powder of a uh, metallic, uh, a powder that can be influenced by magnetic fields, and it gives up this, uh, this field, this, uh, this, uh, this pattern. You must understand that this, this is in three-dimensional space. This is a two-dimensional representation of a three-dimensional space. But nevertheless, the so-called omnions or ether particles influence the metallic substance to form in this manner or in this electromagnetic force. Here are other examples of electromagnetic fields. Um, these are all electromagnetic fields, and this electromagnetic field goes over the ether. Let's recap now everything. There, apparently there's an ether where practically electromagnetic waves or even magnetism and electricity all would not be possible without the ether feeding this, uh, uh, this uh, event in, the, in this world. The ether goes through matter, but nevertheless influences matter because it's practically responsible for gravity. Using this ether theory, you could understand how waves logically, practically travel through the cosmos. When you feel when you feel the centrifugal force or centripetal force on you, or you're driving a car and then take a left or a right, your body wants to keep on going because the ether is moving through you at that certain speed. You actually feel in your body the omnions or the particles of the ether. You can also describe in this theory that uh, 
A space station that rotates generates its own stream of ether and hence its own gravity. But it is the same force that keeps us practically on this planet Earth because the ether moves practically downward uh, towards Earth and it's being sucked by this Earth. It is a force field that keeps us downward. Uh, electricity or even lightning strikes or lightning uh, generally like Nikola Tesla's coils generate this incredible amount of power from the ether. And even as you could see in the video, the magnetic waves, the magnetic fields that are generated by two magnets opposing each other and within that, uh, 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 a powdery substance like metals, that uh, ferro metals that interact with this magnetic field form in a certain fashion. This force is generated and goes also through the ether. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video and cheers.